Hey, it's Jason Duff from Small Nation, and I am here today with Lyle Ensley from Anytime Fitness and the Loco Depot. Uh, Lyle, good to see you today. Good to see you, Jason. I see you're in the home office right now. How is that working out? Uh, it's going fine, just like everyone else, staying at home and uh, doing the quarantine thing. So yeah, actually, definitely actually pretty a, well. a new reality. And, and Lyle, I know that uh, you are like a lot of people listening and watching right now. You are always on the go. Um, in fact, I know your morning routine starts out pretty early in the morning. Is that right? right. Yep, it does. Yeah, so it's been a little, little adjustment. A little adjustment to that. And then also, you know, we, your business is one of the first businesses uh, related to social distancing that, you know, because of health precautions and the governor's orders, um, you had to change your business practice. Um, how, yep. when you first heard that and, and how, how did you respond to that in, in dealing with, with your business being closed? Well, I think a, a lot on the fly to a large degree um, because this wasn't a, a national shutdown and with Anytime Fitness, there's clubs everywhere. Um, there wasn't really a necessarily a plan for us, communication, what we do with accounts and everything else. So um, we, we really, I was kind of preparing for it. And I think, you know, that my wife works internationally and she'd been telling me about, you know, uh, Europe and what's going on there. And so she had kind of predicted what was coming here, even though I was in, in the initial phases, probably uh, denying it a little bit, saying, no, I don't think it'll be that bad here. The reality was, yes, it, it, it did come here. And so I think mentally I was prepared for what was coming. And I think when I heard over the weekend that, that the governor had closed the restaurants and bars and we came in on Monday morning, I kind of prepped the staff because I felt that we were inevitably going to be next. You know, I didn't know if it'd be Monday later in the week, but I could see it coming. So, um, you know, we, we cleaned, you know, every day as much as we were in there to make people feel, even though we clean anyways, we, we try to be even more diligent about it. Um, but uh, we try to stay positive and, and shut everything down as best we could and, and start making those decisions on, okay, what, what can we turn off from a uh, utilities or, you know, we've got to have our gas and electric, but what are some other monthly things we have that we can maybe put on hold and, started working with, you know, our landlords, our, our banks, and really start putting the steps into place probably Tuesday, Wednesday, right away, um, and then looking at, uh, you know, relief packages that were going to be available and knowing that uh, even at that time they hadn't declared us yet, but getting ready for us to fall in line with New York and Jer New Jersey and some of these other that had become national disasters where you could apply with the SBA for the economic relief package just kind of getting those ducks in a row and then, and then telling my staff when, when I had to basically say we're closing to encourage them to apply for unemployment as soon as possible. Right. And uh, it's kind of a tough thing to do, it is. but uh, it's really looking out for their best interest. And, and again, like you, you have a lot of people that work with you. You know, my, my big thing with running a business is also making sure that my people are taken care of, but and we have employees, we have coaches, trainers, um, but then we have our members. You know, we have a thousand plus members out there that we're dealing with too. And the last thing that they want to hear is they can't come to the gym. And I think it was part of that understanding that this was bigger than, than just us. And, and this wave was coming that uh, we've all kind of taken in stride and, and we're learning each day, I think, how to deal with it. But, uh, you know, it's difficult just like it is with everyone else. You know, not only, uh, are we dealing kind of with the emotional response of just uh, information overload and the, the trauma? I know, you know, for, for, for me, speaking for myself, like um, I'm not used to not going into work every day and just doing and creating and staying busy. And I also right. think I enjoy solving problems, but yeah. some of these problems are like out of my control. And so, you know, it's been the, the, the emotions of getting through that. So like the, the trauma of like, I can't believe this is happening but then also just grief and, and then kind of working through to say, okay, I got to keep my mental health game in order. And I know, you know, for, for most of your life, like you have been through career changes. You've also had and, and dealt with industries that have closed down that you've had to innovate and, and reinvent yourself. Is there any advice that you have for like people like me that are working through those processes? Well, I think it is a process. And I think, um, you know, us as, as leaders or managers and, and we're, we're control freaks to a large degree yeah. that that's yeah. what we are yeah. and it's yeah. very difficult to be in a situation that what you plan you're not in control of this you know I, I think a lot of people had said that you always are coming up with 
you're always looking ahead down the road. You know, sometimes worst case scenarios, how are you going to adapt? And this was one that we didn't really have planned for. And still the unknowns of, okay, is this going to be a, a two week? Is this going to be a one month, a two month, a three month, six month? We don't know still. But I think as a, as a leader, owner, um, what I've tried to do over my you know, career is you're never going to see me sweat. You know, they, they don't want to see you panicking. And I always talk about like, like a duck. I, you know, on the surface, they're going to see calm Lyle. They're not going to see me paddling. And, you know, and, and they're just not going to see that part of me because they're going to go with what we lead with. And, and if I start going crazy and panicking, that's just going to reverberate through them. And honestly, through that's leaders, whether it be with the country, whatever, you don't want somebody up there that is just shooting from the hip and, and, you know, things going crazy. You want them to, you know, have a plan, but under control and say, look, you know, we're dealing with some situations and this country's dealt with them throughout the centuries. We, there's always been something that has happened. Um, this is our time where we're dealing with something that's going to be in history books and they're going to read about, and this can either be our, our darkest hour or when we come out of this, our finest hour. And so that's what I prefer to think of is, okay, when we do come out of this, how are we going to be prepared and how are we going to, you know, come back even stronger? I know, I know it's hard to say sometimes because, you know, maybe you don't. And, and the, the, I think even when we had our anti fitness uh, conference call with, with our founders, um, they were frank with us. They said, quite honestly, there's going to be some of our franchisees that don't come out of this. Yeah. And that, that's going to happen, I, I think, with businesses and everything else. Um, it's just part of evolution, I guess, and, and how you adapt to change. But uh, we want to be strong and saying, that's not going to be us. We're going to come through this. And no matter what it takes, and, and like I used to tell my son when we first started the business you know, 11 years ago, failure is not an option. You know, it's, That's you know, right. we'll deal with whatever comes along. And I think one thing I've, I've seen with the leaders, you know, in Bell Fountain and got to know everybody is, you know, uh, everybody is, is that way. They're all fighters. Um, they're going to do whatever it takes, you know, they're in the front lines, mm -hmm. you know, just like, you know, when we had the issue and, and you were serving at the restaurant and dealing tables, I mean, we, we adapt right. and it may not be what we had planned a year ago, but, uh, you know, the, I think we, we had a conversation not too long ago where we said it's going to be kind of a, a new world right. that we're it's going to reality. have. It, it may not be coming back to the way things were. We're going to have to adjust to kind of the new world order and how things are set up. But, you know, we will survive and uh, maybe our success will look a little differently. Maybe our structure will look a little differently. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. Yeah, I, I agree completely. And I think that the other thing that gives me hope is that looking back two weeks ago, you know, many of uh, the business owners and, and entrepreneurs that I've been speaking with, you know, were having their best year ever, uh, their best month ever. And there was all of these, this momentum and, and new ideas. And, and that stuff is still, it's still out there. You know, we, we will get through this. And then it's like, like you said, figuring out that new reality um, and then how we can capture opportunity in the new reality. So, you know, speaking to that, because I think there's someone that is always thinking about innovating, um, you know, what, what do you think, you know, related to health and wellness, now that we've been exposed to how fragile health can be, um, right. do you, you know, how do you think about that in ways that we may be changing our habits, we may be refocusing and retooling some things as individuals, as, as people? Well, I think just from, from our vantage point, what, what I've seen from our community is, people really miss the gym. You know, it, it, it's hard. Um, you know, I, I talked years ago when, when I would do talks for civic groups and, and I would uh, talk about the fitness industry and I'd show a picture of a treadmill and I'd say, we call that the $600, you know, uh, coat rack because that's where, you know, your treadmill ends up just having clothes on because it's hard to do things at home. Um, I think about 10% of people, statistically that have home equipment actually use their equipment. I think that's changed now and I, people are adapting and making, you know, I made it my garage into a makeshift little gym with some weights and benches and just a stuff to keep me occupied. Um, but I think that people miss that community. And, and so I, I think in a way it, it's, it's kind of reminded people the value of having that, whether, whether you're going to why, whether you're coming to our place, but that, that, you know, when you're with other people, if it's just coming in and saying hello and that connection, and I think that's what people are missing a lot of. 
the uh, as far as just fitness and exercise and everything else, I think um, I think it it does make people kind of take a step back from. I always take uh, kind of when I'm taking my walks with the dog or I'm doing runs or whatever, and you're kind of thinking through, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Uh, we didn't. What did we do to deserve this? And 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 you start your mind starts running, but but when you start really gaining perspective and saying, you know what, it could always be worse, and it could. And, uh, you know, there, we could have gone into this when we weren't hitting on all cylinders. We had, we had really turned about, we're having, you know, our best year ever. Um, there's, there's other things that could have happened that, you know, you think, um, I had a good friend that, that died of cancer last year, you know, found out in September was, was dead after the first of the year. I mean, he would trade places with me in a heartbeat. I mean, right. life, life is fragile and, Yes, this may seem like the end of the world, but for us and our business and everything else, it's not the end of the world. It's important, but keep it in perspective. Um, it's not like this is something that just you were experiencing or, or me that something happened and my place flooded and I can't open. And we're all dealing with this. Every all business can, and every yeah, industry, we're in it's, the it's same a, it's, boat. It's That's a right. ripple effect on everybody. So I think what you're seeing in, is people are being very respective, supportive. Um, you know, you've seen it in the community with people with uh, going to restaurants and takeouts and getting gift cards. And um, it, sometimes it takes something like a 9-11 or something like this to kind of bring us together again, where we've had this yeah. huge divide for so long, it seems like. And um, you're starting to see some of that. And so out of every situation, hopefully you can find some good that comes out of it. And you hope that we come out of this healthy and, and uh, we, we we learn some lessons from this and we don't forget it a week later and go back the way we were that we kind of learn to be a little more respectful, um, take care of ourselves, take care of our neighbors and know that, you know, whereas in this, we're, we're in this all together. When we, when we come back and we're all working together again, and that's, I think, when you brought groups through, you know, that are talking or seeing what we're doing. And I think what they come away with is, how we treat each other in the business respect of downtown. You know, all the business leaders, you know, all respect each other, we support each other. And I think that's what's gonna hold us together when we come out of this, because we already have that. And I think hopefully you'll see more of that with other communities that are dealing with this, that they say, hey, we've, we've, got, to, we've got to connect. We, we may not agree on everything completely, but we have to support each other and, and, and then move forward. Really like that. And I do think, uh, you know, while a lot of people are putting their businesses on pause to the public, you know, behind the scenes, there's lots of innovation, creativity, and conversations happening that when we can release and put things back on play, you know, we, we can have a, a concentrated effort. Are, are you thinking about that in new ways right now um, with how you're going to reopen and relaunch? And not that you have to share all the secrets, but like, yeah. like you may be giving some, some examples for how you internally are discussing things with your team um, to get ready, ready for, for that, that, re, that, 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 that reopening. Yeah, I think it, first of all, it's staying connected, staying connected with our community um, where we're posting daily workouts, um, posting, you know, helpful hints. Uh, today we use Zoom for a workout with the Loco Depot that they were leading. So we were kind of doing it together, you know, with, with like a card game and whatever you put up is the kind of exercise you did, how many reps. But I think just having that constant engagement where we don't just go dark, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, we still are there. Um, we're trying to help people because we're in the same boat. How can we do, you know, Drew's been very good from his home showing at home exercises and how you can use just things around the house to work out with. So I think those things, health tips, um, I, just staying connected. I think having that communication is probably the key. And then as we do get further down the road and we do sense that, that we're coming to a point where we're going to be able to reopen to make sure we're giving people a lot of, uh, you know, lead time to say, here's, here's what we're doing that we, that we kind of do a soft opening again to make sure that when we get in there, we don't immediately invite everybody in. We want to make sure we, again, get everything set, get everything turned back on, get everything clean, because we have been in there and uh, fortunately I have some people locally that are checking on the club from time to time to make sure that everything is, is good. Um, and then uh, almost a re-grand opening. 
Um, you know, we'll, we'll have some celebration. I mean, uh, it'll, it'll be, I think, a fun time. And we've done a great job. I mean, our downtown business partnerships done a great thing with, you know, the first Fridays and all that community. And I sense we maybe we'll do something like that again when we all are open again. And I think it'll be fun to see everybody down there and visit and kind of, you know, just remind everybody all the great things we have. You know, there is something to be said about the freedoms and the rights that, that we have, you know, being uh, American and, you know, the joys of being able to go to a, a sporting event or attend a concert um, or to celebrate, you know, time with friends and family. And I think people are really, really missing that and excited yeah. to be able to do that again. So I, I really like that idea of, of planning out that future, that celebration and that, you know, re-grand opening. I'd like to ask you a little bit about um, accountability, you know, uh, to develop a, a successful, healthy habit. Um, it takes, it takes some work. It's not easy. And I think right now it's easy to be at home um, right. and, and, you know, maybe sit on the couch. And I, I think everyone is watching um, lots of hours of Netflix right now. Um, and so what, what advice do you have and maybe that you've seen being successful developing some accountability um, maybe with a buddy or a friend or, or someone to really um, stay on your goals, both for your health and your wellness and, and, and any advice about that? I would encourage everyone to keep a routine. Um, I still get up early. I maybe don't get up as early as I did, um, but I still get up early. Um, I do some work, uh, checking emails, um, communications, and then I work out. Um, and then I come back and, and do more emails and, and work, you know, just, you know, the business doesn't go away, even though, you know, the members have gone away. There's still things that I have to take care of. And I've also got the, the town money saver part that I do as well. And, and we're not printing that because of, you know, everything is shut down. So um, I would just say, you know, keep some semblance of a routine because it'd be very, very easy to uh, stay in your pajamas all day. And, you know, and, and, and I, I just heard something the other day that, that the video conferencing, they were asking people, were they dressing up when, when they do videos or are they uh, blocking it so people can't see them? Um, I get that. And there is going to be downtime. And uh, if you can take advantage of, of getting outside, uh, I've seen more people, I didn't know in this neighborhood, we had this many kids and dogs that are walking around. Um, but it's good to get outside. There's something about being outside in the fresh air. I just back, got back from a bike ride uh, to kind of clear your head. But 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 have a routine. Treat your treat work, whether it be reading something um, that is related to your job, um, anything that inspires you. Um, just work on some plans for when you do reopen. Um, it, you know, you just can't completely shut down. And and I I'd liken it almost to to a retirement because uh, it, it's through the years I've seen people that have retired that have been members of the gym and they always talk about retiring. They love it. And in six months they're bored silly. You know, yeah. you, you've got to find something, a passion of something to do. And so um, this is a good time to, you know, maybe uh, take up a hobby you hadn't done that, that you can do at home, but, but keep a structure of some sort. Don't just, wake up and grab breakfast and turn on the tube and just watch TV all day. I mean, that'd be a very easy thing to fall into, but um, still try and be disciplined with, uh, you know, eating, um, getting your workout when you can. If you've got a workout buddy, do it with, you know, Zoom or do it on FaceTime or, or do something that gets people together. I've seen a lot of workouts with uh, uh, families posting, you know, they're doing a workout with their kids. And they do it outside and having fun. And, and we posted Loco Kids and Lindy's done a great job with posting workouts for kids. Um, it just keep everybody active. And I think that's one thing that I think I'm hearing from people. They're like, wow, my, I'm usually so busy in my job and everything else. I'm really appreciating this time. Now, some of us don't understand. Oh, my gosh, I'm driving crazy. I get out of the house. I, I get that <laughs> right. too. Right. But, uh, but have some structure, have a routine, keep to it. And, and, and don't just completely shut down because – um, that's, that's not good for anybody. You need to stay active and, and there's keep that communication going. And I'm fortunate that I'm, that I'm here, you know, uh, our sons and, and, and Shelly, she works from home, but if you're by yourself in isolation, that's where it's really tough. And, uh, you really need that communication, uh, whether it be, you know, just, you know, on video or going out, keeping that six foot distance, but, but staying active and it just makes you feel better. Clues your head a little bit. Really great advice there. Um, the, you know, I know you're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. 
Um, and, you know, both of us have significant others that are working in healthcare right now. And, and I know Shelly, you know, she's doing a lot of traveling and stuff uh, related to this as well. But um, I think one of the things that's confusing right now is that a lot of people feel that um, the virus in just a few weeks or a few months is going to go away. Um, and I know while they're working on treatments um, to respond to this, the, the likelihood of them having that magic bullet or that vaccine um, is not great. Um, and, and so, you know, what I think we're going to have to prepare people for is to have the confidence that when um, we're not overwhelming the healthcare system and, uh, you know, the governor or the president give us, you know, more guidance on this, is that we're going to have to go back out and, and kind of live life. Um, and a big part of that living life is that we, we face risk every day, uh, going out, you know, just walking out, out of our doors. Um, any way to kind of frame that? And I, I know, again, I can speak to, to, to your industry of being health, like right. getting our immune systems in the best shape is probably the, the best defense. But can, can you kind of speak to that a little bit? I can try. Um, you know, it, it's such the unknown. In other words, there's not a cure for this and don't know if there will be one. And I think they're still learning. And so hopefully over the next coming months and year, um, there will be a vaccine or there'll be some more about, okay, if you contract it, are you now immune? You know, almost like you get the measles and you won't get the measles good or something like that. Um, so I think we're really just seeking information and, and there's so many people that are probably have had it and maybe have shown no signs. I mean, I may have had it, you may have had it. We, we don't know at this point. Um, and uh, it has hit a lot of the elderly, but we're seeing that it happens in some younger people too. And um, it, it's, we can't freak out completely about it because, you know, that's, that's just not going to help anything. I think we need to be careful and we need the, the self quarantine while it's painful for us. I think it is the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, Shelly's been telling me a lot about the curve in Italy and, and Spain and everything else. And to do this, you know, we have to do this to flatten that curve. And, and I know when, when governor DeWine uh, canceled um, the Arnold, way back when. And everybody's like, that's crazy. And I was probably one of them thinking, oh my God, but, but he was kind of ahead of the game on that. And I'm hoping that us getting an early jump on this and, and, if, and if we do enforce this with everyone and, and, and we do stay home like we're supposed to, that um, uh, we'll get out of this sooner than later. And then just, just normal stuff, be careful. I think if anything, it's taught people we need to wash our hands more. It's not rocket science. The basics, right? The basics. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the eating. They say, you know, hey, how do I lose weight? Well, you know, you, you uh, consume less calories than you burn, you know, or, you know, you, you, it's, 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 it's simple math. It's, it's, you know, what you eat and, and what you work off. But we know it's not that easy and, and we get busy and, and we use hand sanitizer and, and, and we cough without covering. And, and so all these basic things we're learning that we should have been doing all along. I think we'll be maybe a little more cautious about that. Um, but I think we'll learn more about this as time goes on. But right now it's just that it's that kind of that unknown. And it's, and it's scary when you see, you know, what New York is going through right now. And it's, it's, um, it's tough when you see people going on ventilators and, and there really isn't anything they can do beyond that. And it, it's, it's very, very, and it's, you don't know who it's going to affect. And so you just have to be careful. So we just yeah, have to do it. Yeah. Great, great advice. That one thing that, uh, you know, I've been asking the question of a lot of folks, do you, do you personally know someone that has been diagnosed or is maybe um, dealing with the virus? And for the longest time, um, people that have asked me that question, I had to answer no. Right. Um, but recently, uh, someone that I, I do know and respect um, um, from it's an alum of the university I went to and, you know, he is in his 40s um, in perfect health. Uh, and he recently shared his journey um, as a professional cyclist, you know, him getting the symptoms of a sore throat and it working through his lungs and how he and his family have been dealing with that. Now, luckily, um, he got professional health care in, in his home and, and has recovered. But um, is dealing with some after effects, uh, you know, from, from the situation. But that was the first person that I actually knew um, that had went through, went through and, and was diagnosed. Um, i just curious, do you have anyone in your network that has been through this that you know? If not? I don't, thankfully, thankfully, no, but I'm, I'm sure at some point that will probably change just as this thing increases and everything else. I mean, it's bound to touch all of us. It's almost like, you know, cancer to a certain, can't talk to anybody that hasn't in one way or another been touched by it. And I think this is probably going to be the same thing to a certain degree. So if we frame things around, hey, you know, we, we've had this kind of reset 
um, in life and in business and just as a country and a world really, you know, it does give us that time to frame things for what, what do we want to do about health? Um, and, and where do we want to spend our time and money by investing in better health? And it can be something as simple like, you know, the amount of water that we're, we're drinking. And I'm even getting more conscious of that because I'm doing a lot more speaking now that yep. I'm doing these events. Um, but but I, I do agree with you that, that I think habits are going to change. And I think for wearing our entrepreneurial hat is how can we be a part of those positive solutions to society um, and those good habits where people want to invest money to, to, you know, instead of getting healthcare after the fact, let's start investing in being proactive about what we're doing to better care for our bodies. Yeah, I couldn't say it any, any better. We, we've talked about that. And I think that you're seeing a lot of companies that have in, in the last few years that are uh, investing in preventative rather than reactive after the fact, uh, where that we've got, you know, local companies that are paying for memberships um, or at least assisting with membership, knowing that this is something that is, uh, going to be a healthier lifestyle for their employees, which means they're probably going to be sick less. Um, they're probably going to have to use their medical insurance less if they do some of these things on the front end. And so I think we are seeing that we're becoming a more active society. Um, and, and it's something that we've been talking about for a long time. And I think more and more people are probably, because they always say that, um, you, if, you, if you're on, you know, death's bed and, you know, you've got a million dollars, um, you'd give everything for your health. That's and, right. uh, you know, we're at a time where if you have choices um, to make better choices for your health and the simple things are, you know, hey, don't smoke and, and you know, don't, don't overeat and all these other things and, and cut down on diabetes and things that maybe we can control. Um, but, uh, I think the exercise world and everything has changed so much in the last 30 years, you know, where it used to be you know, bodybuilders and now it's like the average person. It's there's something for everybody. If you, if you want to compete, Hey, there's stuff there for you. But if you just want to have a silver sneakers class, where you are going to sit in a chair and, and use balloons and bands and just stay active and everything in between classes, group training, just, staying active and and then uh, start paying attention to more about you know being healthier eating healthier and i love that the restaurants you know started putting calories you know with with you know what you're eating and just it's it's we're seeing whole foods and we're seeing trade we're seeing all these different options healthier options and i think you're going to see more and more of that which is a good thing well, we're coming up on uh, our half an hour here, and uh, I think, you know, thank you so much for sharing so many awesome nuggets and, you know, just pieces of advice to really help people that may be at home um, excited to get back to the gym. You, you know, you have provided some, some homework on, um, you know, how people can stay involved and active doing some of these virtual workouts right. and then uh, providing some accountability, you know, maybe finding that buddy. Um, and, you know, there's one quote that, that popped up as you were talking about, but it, 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 I just wrote it down is that. Um, when you don't know what to do next, um, one of the best things that you can do is just do something. And I think that was the message that I took, took away from, from what you're sharing is that um, really now is a time to be, if, you're, if you own a business, to be working on that business. Um, if you're, you're home with your family, it's to be working on those projects or goals that you have and spending that quality time. Or if it's refocusing or retooling your health, you know, now's the best time to set those goals and, uh, you know, get out just like you were about a half an hour ago on your bike. Um, get get your mind clear and, and breathe that air and get get refreshed. Yeah, I think just um, trying to stay positive and and, it, and it's hard sometimes. And and anybody who says that they don't have those dark times and they think this stuff are, are probably lying. We all deal with it. But I think the main thing is to um, know that this isn't going to last forever. Um, that you know this is a time for us to kind of recharge and redirect um, and refocus. And, uh, and be excited for when we do come out, because uh, I think if anything, this just makes us appreciate everything a lot more of what we're missing. Well said. Thank you, uh, Lyle Inslee from Anytime Fitness and Loco Depot. Thanks so much for joining us today, Lyle. Thanks, Jason. See you.